What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and since the winter time is here that means that there's less to do outside, more to do inside. Today we're going to start a new uh, series called Test and Tune where we dive into parameters much overlooked and see what exactly they do. So stick around. <music> Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And before we get started, I just want to say that I, Kyle, your tuner in advisory, I don't even know. Nonetheless, if you have not already checked out our Instagram, we do have an Instagram out there now. We're just kind of getting started out there. There's not a lot going on, but check it out, goatropegarage.com. And make sure and share your projects with the hashtag goatropegarage.com. That way, everybody that uh, is a part of the family can see what everybody else is doing specifically this winter. Now, that being said, this is a new series where we dive in, look at a parameter two every time. We make adjustments to it. We load it up on the Super Auto, see what it does, see if it actually does anything and uh, you know, kind of try and guess maybe what it does and then figure out if it's something that we could use to tune or not. Uh, that being said though, I don't necessarily suggest going out and doing this kind of trial and error all the time. And if you do, make very, very small increments. That way, if it does throw a system way out of whack, it doesn't tear something up. Uh, other than that, listen, if you haven't subscribed, make sure and click that button down in the corner. That way you don't miss out on any of this new series, any of the tuning stuff, any of the live stuff ring that bell, get the notifications, and uh, check out the links down below, specifically out to the website, goatropegarage.com, where you can get merch, find out stuff about the Patreon, etc. So that being said, let's go ahead and pull up the uh, editor right now and take a look at what we're gonna do today. So diving into the general tab, I thought what better place to start than the uh, cylinder and cylinder volumes. The cylinder counts and cylinder volumes, uh, it seems like it would be pretty straightforward. Literally, if you change the cylinder counts, probably not gonna run. Uh, if you change the cylinder volumes, it would uh, affect the air mass calculations. That is the thought process behind it. But I happen to know for a fact that there is a couple platforms out there in which the cylinder volume is not set up right based on the engine that is tied to the ECM. A good example, I believe, is the maybe the LS2 GTO, I think is still set up as a 5.7 liter in the cylinder volumes. So what will happen if we make these adjustments? Well, we'll start off with the cylinder count up there. We'll change it to maybe a 10 cylinder. We can dream big because we don't want to go smaller here in the garage, right, 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 right. Or, you know, we'll do that first. We'll load it in, see what happens. And then, you know, we'll go back behind, change that back to stock and change the cylinder volume out and we'll bump it out to maybe, you know, we're, uh, 5.3 in here, we'll bump it out to like the 6.2 liter settings and see, I think that the cylinder, I think both of them will probably break something on this truck as far as keeping it from properly running. So what I've done is gone ahead and gone into the truck, warmed it up a little bit so we're not doing a cold start, especially because it's below freezing out here and the truck doesn't necessarily like to start. I don't start it that often this cold. And so it needs some work down in the cold start areas, uh, the cold cranking uh, airflow areas, but I've got ahead, got it started, got it warmed up a little bit. We should get a decent start out of it. Let's change those values and see what happens. Okay, the first thing that we're looking at here, in fact, we can only go up to eight on this ECM. It maxes out at eight, not surprised given that there's probably not any GMs that I know of that are going more than eight cylinders. So we'll go ahead and drop this thing down to six. We're not gonna do something stupid like seven. This is not a Volvo or a Saab or whatever the weird uh, five cylinder engines are, but we'll drop it down to six and we'll just see what it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this in. Uh, hopefully we have enough battery to do, a, to do the right and we'll see if the thing starts. Stick around. Okay, now that we've effectively killed the battery for the umpteenth time, let's see if we can start this thing up with the charger hooked up. I don't think it's gonna run. <laughs> Surprisingly, changing it from uh, eight cylinders down to six cylinders, I don't know that it's gonna run. Ooh, that don't sound good. Okay, we're giving it 50 amps. It'll at least crank this time. Doesn't seem to like that, does it? I'll tell you what, 
I'm going to go ahead, put this thing back to eight and see if we can at least get it to run. Make sure that we're just not having battery issues because cold weather and a crappy battery is messing with us. But I have a sneaking suspicion it's not going to have an issue running once we go back to eight. Let me load this in. I'll be right back. Okay, first, the disclaimer, don't dump a configuration like that or don't load a configuration whenever you're hooked up to a battery charger like this. You're asking for trouble. So that being said, don't always do what I do. I would say that I'm an expert here, but no, and sometimes I'm just an idiot. And if you were to brick an ECM, you know, it's probably going to happen whenever you're hooked up to a battery charger or something. But that being said, let's see if the truck will even run. It apparently does not like the six cylinder. Now, maybe we can add a couple parameters real quick and figure out why. Let me see if there's anything worth adding in to the configuration that might give us uh, some insights. And if we log current firing cylinder for a couple times, and let's go ahead and shut the truck off. We logged current firing cylinder. Let's slow it down it's very, very, very slow. Five, seven, zero, two, five, six, seven, eight. We're not seeing an eight in, the, oh, well, zero. Zero to seven. So we are getting seven counts on our firing cylinders. Now the question is, if we go in, change this back down to six, is it only gonna fire zero to six, or zero to five? So let's try it one more time. Okay, we got our kick back down to six. Let's go ahead and connect up with the scanner. We'll start logging right out the bat and we're not gonna log it for very that long. Let's just see if we can get a couple cranks here. Yep, I believe we were correct there. So, watching our current firing cylinder again, if we go very slow, we're not gonna see cylinder six and seven on this one. Get her down here. Three, four, five, zero, one, two, three. See, and it even changes the firing order. That's good to know. So not only does it only fire six cylinders, but it goes to the six cylinder firing order. That's why this thing won't run, uh, because theoretically, if the firing order stayed the same whenever we went to six cylinders on here, it would still run. It just wouldn't fire on the two cylinders. But because it's changing the firing order of this, it's not running because we are actually, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You can do damage to an engine doing stuff like this because we were firing the cylinders at the wrong time on two of those cylinders. So, okay, cool. Let's jump over. I'm going to put that back to eight and then we're going to bump up our uh, cylinder volume. Let's just, you know what? We'll just add a 10th of a liter to all six. So we'll make it a 76 to 50. We can figure out what that is. I'll put it down in a thing because I don't have a ca calculator on me right now, but what do you guys think as we write this in? Do you think this is gonna work? I mean, theoretically, this should just change some of the volume calculations or the air mass calculations, I think. I don't know, never tried it. As I said, doesn't seem to matter on some generations. That being said, just because it does something like this on this platform doesn't mean it'll do the same thing for your platforms. This is just you know, kind of having fun testing some things out. So keep that in mind. So now that's written in, we should know pretty quick what's going on because we should have some, if we increase the volume that much, it should be thinking that it's making a lot more air than it actually is. So I would not be surprised to see us have an issue here. We're in open loop right now. That's because things haven't warmed up yet. Doesn't seem to be making much of a difference. You would think that adding almost a full liter of displacement to the setup here would cause it to go way off. But I mean, figuring that we're not in closed loop yet, this thing's running really good. Let me bump it over to closed loop, see what happens. Smooths right on out. Okay. Kind of boring, right? 
Well, let me set everything back to stock here, or back to the way it was, then we'll do a wrap up. Okay, so what did you think? Did things go down the way that you expected them to? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I learned something new on the cylinder count. Did not expect it to change the firing order. Pretty interesting to see. Wasn't as surprised to see that deactivated, basically uh, the, what would be considered the six and seven, which is the seventh and eighth, because we start at zero cylinders and we weren't firing two cylinders. But the fact that it did change the firing order, but it makes sense because whenever, uh, since these are electronic, uh, you know, ignition systems and these ECMs are being used on four cylinders, six cylinders and V8s, it would have to automatically change the firing order or have somewhere in the ECM that you could change the firing order. And correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the Gen 3s, there's a spot in there that you can change the firing order and maybe even so on some of the Gen 4s. So let me down, uh, know down below if that's the case. Now the cylinder volume stuff, uh, as I said, I knew for a fact that there's some different uh, setups out there like the E40 LS2 setup in which that is programmed wrong, does not seem to make a difference. Now that being said, even though it was programmed wrong on that doesn't mean that they couldn't have properly tuned the vehicle and gotten everything dialed in with that being wrong. But being that it didn't seem to change anything about the way that it operated, at least down in the idle range, doesn't seem to make a difference. Once again, did you expect that? Did you expect something different? I mean, I kind of expected it to throw some things off, but at the same time, I wasn't that surprised when it didn't. So hit up the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's any parameters specific that you want me to test out. Now, you gotta remember, it's gotta stick to a Gen 5 here because that's all that we have access to right now. Maybe in the future, whenever we get into some Gen 4 stuff and we get a new project car, then we can talk about doing some Gen 4 parameters, but kind of an interesting way of learning what some of these parameters do because there's not a lot of information on the parameters that people don't tune with out there. And I'm hoping that we can solve that. So that being said, I'm gonna wrap it up for this one. Remember, uh, check out all the links down below, like, subscribe, comment, all that fun jazz. Uh, you know, make sure and check out the live show Thursday, uh, eight o'clock Eastern, it's a blast. Love seeing you, everybody's faces there. It's a great way to get questions answered in live real time. Also, you can check out the podcast. We do have a podcast out now. Just search at your favorite podcast providers for Goat Rope Garage or in tune. It should pop up under either or. And uh, it is basically just the Thursday night live show in audio format for those who can't make the live show. Uh, that being said, remember, ABT, always be tuning. And thank you for stopping by the garage.